Hi, this is Jeremy and welcome to our introduction into ITOT video series. With me is Christian. Hi Jeremy, glad to be back here with you. Yeah, um, and today we're going to talk about Docker, Kubernetes and Helm. Yeah, last time, uh, just to give a little recap about, uh, I think it's already two or three weeks ago, we talked about client server and event driven architecture and monolithic and microservice architecture. And I think that's a good uh, catch up because today uh, Docker, Kubernetes and Helm chart is exactly the microservice architecture that we talked about uh, mm -hmm. the last time. So I would say let's have a closer look at the, the microservice architecture and especially the tools and technologies for building a highly scalable and reliable setup. So Jeremy, can you guide us through what is Docker, what is Kubernetes and Helm and why do we as United Manufacturing Hub use those technologies? Yeah, so let's start with, with Docker. Docker is the de facto standard to containerize software code into microservices. So if you want to program a microservice, there is a 99% chance that you're going to use Docker. Actually, Docker is not exactly uh, correct. There, is, um, there are different fun te techniques behind it, uh, but basically you just put them all together under one brand name and say, okay, let's just use Docker. Um, you might have heard something like Docker is depreciated uh, or something like this. It is all like very technical stuff in the back end, still on the front end, it all looks like Docker. So if you have a microservice, you're going to use Docker. And what you do is you, there is a very good video which you also find here and learn from Fireship, which will guide you through what Docker is in 100 seconds. If you haven't watched it, uh, I really recommend it because it goes through, through the main points. Basically, instead of having like a virtual machine where you first have to, uh, where you have the operating system and then you boot it up and then you install your software. In Docker, you write a so-called Docker file where you basically say all these steps that you need to do in a virtual machine manually, you just write them in text file, basically saying, okay, let's have Ubuntu. Um, and I want to install these three packages to it. And now I want to download this. And when I start the container, I want to have, want to execute this command. And this is, this makes it way more portable and way more reproducible than a virtual machine. And with this Docker container, as soon as you pack the microservice into it, you can basically run it anywhere. There are some small exceptions, like, like difference between like the CPU architecture, some problems between like ARM and, and the um, normal server architecture, but otherwise it's very, very portable, except, uh, or especially compared if you compare it to virtual machines. That's interesting. And w what is Kubernetes then doing with those Docker con uh, containers? Yeah, so we originally started with just Docker. Like if I take a look like four years, four or five years ago, it was just like, okay, let's just spawn gra up Grafana uh, Node-RED in a Docker container. So Docker run. Then we realized, okay, what happens if we want to start multiple containers always at the same time? So you have your industrial IoT stack. And you do not you all do not want to run every time like Docker run Grafana, Docker run uh, Node Red, uh, and for this there is something called Docker Compose. Docker Compose is really helpful for this. You specify basically what how the Docker run commands should look like. You specify it in Docker Compose file, and then with just like with Docker Compose up, it starts up multiple Docker containers. But even we, we went with this for like a like a year or one and a half, but then we also had some some issues there regarding um, complex configurations. So one of the advantages of Docker Compose is, is it's really easy, uh, easy to use. But as soon as the applications grow in complexity, they they it, it struggles. So you can only start up the containers. You can do stuff like. If you have a file system, um, you can store configuration files there. It, it works, but imagine now you want to start up like what we do in the United Manufacturing Hub. You have Grafana, you have Node-RED, you have a database, you have factory inside. You want to all start it up and you want to auto-generate secrets for it. So 
The database, every time you start up, it gets a different password, but the password is pre-configured in Grafana and other tools. This is something that Docker Compose really struggles with. And there we took a look at Kubernetes and Kubernetes together with, with Helm, we will get back to this later. Yeah, that would be my next question. Robert, yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> uh, th this fulfilled our, our needs because now we could specify complex, complex, let me scroll down to it. Now we can uh, specify like complex uh, scenarios, like pre-configure elements. Um, so this is like how a Kubernetes object looks like. If you're just listening to this in audio, you can take a look uh, later on Learn or take a look at the YouTube video that we're going to publish. And now you can say, okay, I want to have this, this container with this tag. It kind of looks like Docker Compose, but now you can do even more complicated stuff. You can say, okay, I want to have it exposed to I don't know, multiple ports. I want to have changing configuration variables. And this was the main reason why we used it. But the actual main reason why companies like it. So Kubernetes is like the operating system of, of the cloud. A lot of companies use it. All large, all large cloud providers use it. Not only have a Kubernetes as a service offering, but they also run their internal workloads on Kubernetes. And the main reason why they do it is that they want to have features like auto scaling, high availability, etc. So we use it first for configuration to handle all these configuration options. But as soon as you grow the application, you can do stuff like um, load balancing. So imagine now you have a lot of users using Grafana. So you can spawn up this Docker container. You can spawn it up multiple times. So if I go, go back here, for example, this is like an example. You can say, okay, this should run like two times or three times and Kubernetes will automatically take care of the load balancing between it. So the first user that logs in lands up on instance number one, the second on instance number two and so forth. So, and, and this is, imagine now you have, you are something like a, a Spotify where you have like hundreds of servers and you need to load balance between it. This is where tools like Kubernetes actually come in. So the, the practical example of Spotify would be then with the load balancing for the non-technical persons is that Kubernetes will manage um, the amount of users listening to music. For example, then in the, in the evening where not a lot of people probably will listen to music because they are sleeping, the load will not be as high as, for example, in the morning when everyone is uh, listening to Spotify music on the way to their work, et cetera, right? Yeah. Uh yeah, this is a good example. And so what what does com what do companies like Spotify do in the night? They schedule something like recommendations. So I think uh, now it's getting like end of the year. I think maybe you have already seen it in Spotify like end of end of year what what did you what did you listen to? This this type of thing. This these are uh, elements that are not required in real time. Um, but Spotify schedules this type of workloads somewhere sometimes when not so many people are listening to music. So the servers are always utilized, but what is running on them is different. So this could be like, this is like one super good example of why, why large IT companies, why they use Kubernetes and why almost all large companies are, are, are using it. That's amazing. And how does Helm uh, comes into place when it comes to that? Yeah, Helm even helps you. It's now even in layer above. Uh, Kubernetes, what it does is we have this Kubernetes object descriptions and in the United Manufacturing Hub, we need to pre-configure them. So if, like the example with the secrets that I mentioned, if you have now a secret and I want to auto-generate it and I want to put it into multiple containers, you can do this with a, with a Helm chart. Uh, in a Helm chart, you can use like, it's like a template, maybe it's like further down. Yeah. This is how it would look like. You still def define your workload, but then you can say, okay, maybe the, the name of it, uh, maybe the, the name of the container, like in this example here, for example, we take an environment variable that you can specify in a separate Helm file uh, and that it would be pasted into here. You can use, very, you can change the versions uh, of it, like the image, but only if you want to, so that we have like complicated logic, like. Hey, by default, please use this tag, but if you specify it otherwise, 
you, we're going to take this one. This is what, for example, happens here. So this is, if, if you want to learn more, I recommend taking, taking um, a look at this article here, uh, where it's explained a little bit more details and where you have like follow-up links where you can even learn even more about it. For the audio listeners, it's on our learn.umh.app where you can find all the information and all, all the examples that Jeremy just showed us um, online and uh, yeah, just have a look if you, if you want to dive deeper into the topic. But Jeremy, I talked to many companies about this topic and uh, every time, as soon as I mentioned that we use Kubernetes, they were a little bit hesitant yeah. when it comes to that topic because for them it seems very complex and hard to learn. So now the question for you, is Kubernetes really that hard to learn and that complex to manage? Yeah, so one of the jokes that you see on uh, uh, social media platforms like Reddit where a lot of programmers hang out is everyone who says that they understood Kubernetes haven't understood Kubernetes. It is actually a highly complex tool. However, it is complex because it can handle all the complexity that you have in highly, in, in very large IT applications. And most of the complexity comes because of that. Um, so you can really deep dive into all, all specific elements. So if you want to spend a couple of weeks just to set up DNS in Kubernetes, you can do it. However, do you actually need to do it? Uh, I would say for most, especially for manufacturing companies who might have only like three to five servers per site. You probably, you, you don't need the full-fledged Kubernetes like K8S, but you can use something simpler like K3S. This is something that we, for example, in the United Manufacturing Hub recommend. We use a flat car with K3S and with this, the installation is very simple. All of the stuff like uh, ingress or DNS, it's, they're all pre-configured elements in it. So you don't need to worry. So the only thing that you need to add there are your workloads. And so it's kind of both is true. So Kubernetes itself is very, can be very, very complex, but there are simpler approaches to it. And I can really recommend taking the simpler approach because you leave the op you leave yourself the option to to later if you if you later maybe have like 50 servers or something you leave the option to use kubernetes still in there um if you use something like K k3s but immediately you can use the advantages like the different configuration options etc so i think even the normal manufacturing applications it will get complex to handle all these docker containers like a lot of companies still looking like for like yeah, I only want to have like one Docker container that handles it all. Very likely if you're going to have your own MQTT broker, you're going to have your database, you're going to have a dashboard. So like only having like one or two Docker containers won't work. So you need to handle this complexity. So why not directly use the tool like, like we did to, to, handle, to handle that? So you, you say that a lot of companies, I mean, no, nowadays they might not have the the um, difficulties already um, and they're setting up the infrastructure with the docker containers and um, th this works perfectly fine but sooner or later they will run into the let's say problems that we had as well at the beginning and that is why we chose uh, to use kubernetes for the scalability for the setup for the management etc so um, this is why you would recommend also manufacturing companies that are not Spotify, of course, but even though they don't have yet the complex infrastructure, but sooner or later they will, will build it up and they will need to manage it. So that's why it's important for them to directly start with, for example, an easy version of Kubernetes. Uh, yeah, I, I would definitely recommend it to, to go that way. Very interesting. If the listeners and companies, uh, the, especially the manufacturing companies, uh, have any questions, then please feel free to ask us in the comments or uh, write us an email or, or through our website. Or the Discord channel. Or the Discord channel, yes. Uh, this is growing, so we are really happy uh, that the Discord channel is growing and uh, that a lot of people are participating and share their ideas, their solutions. So feel free to join us. 
also have a look at our learn platform. And um, I would say for this week, thank you, Jeremy. And I'm I'm looking forward to to talk to you next week again. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.